Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Today I'm going to be looking at one of the Forgotten Empire civilizations, the Magyars. I've noticed in my dealings with other players and chats that I've had that there's a real passionate following for this civilization, and even though the newer civilizations often aren't considered top tier, there's a lot of people who swear by the Magyars and feel this civilization really stands out. I've certainly grown quite fond of them while researching for this video, though don't worry, the Japanese are still my favorite. Let's take a look. Magyars are classified as a cavalry civilization, and we'll look at their bonuses in some detail, as well as their unique unit and tech tree. Their team bonus is that foot archers have plus two line of sight. Now this seems like a strange way to start, since we just said that they're a cavalry civilization, and now we're talking about an archer bonus. It does give some nice potential for a variety of rushing units, and it could help your allies go straight for archers while you go with scouts, and it could also help your own archers if you choose to go for those. Extra line of sight is very useful for early exploration and in seeing those mangonels coming a little bit earlier. You can see this bonus has a notable effect size for both early game as well as late game archers. The only thing I wish is that they had a team bonus that did a bit more to help a mongol ally. Maybe by increasing cavalry archer line of sight by 2 instead of foot archer, because that would give the mongols and the magyars some amazing synergy, or some great head to heads with the early scout rush and the later game cavalry archers. Now let's take a look at their Civ bonuses. The first one is that the Scout line costs minus 10%, so basically they cost 72 food instead of 80. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it's pretty decent. Since Scouts take 30 seconds to create, that means you're saving 16 food per minute. You could look at that as having one free Scout every 4.5 minutes. Another way to look at it is that you normally need around 8.7 farmers without wheelbarrow to sustain production from one stable, and 17.3 farmers at two stables. Because of the cheaper cost, Magyars can get away with fewer farmers. If we're going to ballpark its effect size in an intuitive way, we could say it's the equivalent of having an extra farmer per stable. Now with a well-known and unit-specific bonus like that, it unfortunately means you're also predictable, and a few spears make for a pretty obvious and cost-effective counter if someone thinks scouts are on the way. The second bonus is that villagers kill wolves in one strike. I think this is a really unique bonus, and it makes it easy to forward a barracks with even just one villager without loom. Of course, don't get lulled into a false sense of security. Your villagers are just as weak to scouts and other non-wolf units. Alternately, this could lead to easy walling on Black Forest, which for every other civilization is risky business. And as I've looked at before, losing an early villager actually costs you more than the 50 food cost in potential income that villager would have brought in later. For that reason, I think of it as an indirect eco bonus that works like economy insurance. It prevents the occasional big loss because of some fluke accident, but if nothing goes wrong, you don't notice it's there. The third bonus is that forging, iron casting, and blast furnace are free. Now remember, you have to build a blacksmith first to get this, and as soon as you make your blacksmith, it's instantaneously researched for free, and your scouts go from 5 to 6 attack. Now depending on which units are matching up in the feudal age, forging can help sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't make a difference. In this case, having two scouts without the tech meant that the villager survived, and then with the tech under the same conditions, this time she didn't make it. In the end, if you're up to the Imperial Age, you'll have saved 645 food and 345 gold, and your techs will be done faster, helping you out with lots of possible strategies, like the Scout Rush of course, but also Knights, since most people won't have the attack upgrades while Knight Rushing, and prioritize the defensive upgrades, that means that if you get those defensive upgrades as well, you have the potential to have the most technologically advanced Knights on the field in early Castle Age without having to sacrifice production to get the Iron Casting tech. Moving on now to their unique unit, the Magyar Hazar, which is not this Hazar, which we'll pronounce as Hazar to keep them straight. An interesting fact about this unit is that it's the only unique unit that's also a trash unit, meaning that it potentially doesn't cost any gold after you research their unique tech, which would make them the only castle unique unit at this point to not cost gold. Now let's compare the Magyar's Hazar to the normal Hazar, which don't forget are cheaper for the Magyars. 
The Unique unit is similar in cost and statistically greater overall, as its HP is notably higher and its attack is significantly higher. Now you might think it's strange to have two very similar units available to the same civilization. Why even give the Magyars Hussars if they have a better unit to pick from anyway? There are a few differences that I want to point out. First of all, the Hazar requires a castle to be built, and as we know, it's easier to spam stables than it is to spam castles. This is offset by the fact that the Hazar builds in 16 seconds and the Hussar is 30 seconds, so it ends up appearing as if the castle is working twice as fast as the stable. Beyond that, they each have slightly different roles. The Hussar, for example, does its normal 11 damage against Onagers and 14 against Battering Rams, whereas the Hazar does 8 bonus damage against Onagers in addition to its higher base attack for a total of 22 damage. It also does 10 bonus damage against the Battering Rams for a total of 27 damage per attack. The only thing that makes the Hussar considered anti-siege is its speed, whereas the Elite Hussar has that same speed element just with double the damage per attack. On the other hand, the Hussar does 12 damage against monks, killing a base monk in 2 hits instead of 3, along with also having some conversion resistance. Conversions are a bit random and have a probability aspect to them, but in 20 trials with the post-imperial elite Hussar and the Hussar, the average conversion time was 12.05 seconds compared to 17.35. That's about 44% longer conversion time on average, just to give you an idea of what the difference is. The Hazar also has a much shorter line of sight, with the Hazar's line of sight at 10, the Elite Hazar at 6, and the Paladin's line of sight at 5 tiles. All of this together means that the Light Cavalry line should be preferred in times when you want to be scouting or against monks. The Hazar, on the other hand, is better statistically against all other types of units, especially Siege. Magyar Hazars are probably one of, if not the best, anti-siege unit in Forgotten Empires especially considering the Manga Dai's anti-siege bonus has been reduced. Moving on to the unique techs now, in Castle Age they get access to their technology Mercenaries. This tech removes the 10 gold cost to creating a Hazar. There's not too much to say about this. It's a good investment if you're planning to make 30 or more from a gold perspective, and it's worth getting at any point. Because it pays for itself so quickly, even in the latest stages of the game, it's probably still worth getting it if you haven't already. The second unique tech gives plus one range for cavalry archers. This one comes in the Imperial Age, so it won't help in time for a cavalry archer rush. The importance of the extra range is pretty situational and hard to quantify, but they do become the farthest firing cavalry archers in the game. The Turks, Saracens, and Japanese in the Forgotten Empires are the only other civilizations to get the perfectly upgradable heavy cavalry archer and it's easy to argue the recurve bow gives the Magyars the best cavalry archers of that group of civilizations, though the Mongols and the Huns have other bonuses to make up for missing the last archer armor upgrade, so I wouldn't necessarily say that the Magyars have the best cavalry archers. Personally, I don't notice a huge difference in the effectiveness of adding the plus one range, to be honest, but give it a try and see if maybe that extra range makes a big difference for you. Looking now at their tech tree, we'll start with the archers. It's a pretty nice looking tech tree, especially when you consider the extra technologies working toward it as well. They have great cavalry archers, as I just mentioned, but they are missing the hand cannoneer. Considering their tech tree as a whole, and their team bonus in there as well, I'd give them an A for archers. It's definitely a strength of the civilization. Next we'll look at infantry. The barracks tech tree looks solid, with the halberdier and champion and the free blacksmith attack upgrades allow them to often field more upgraded infantry in the mid game than other civilizations, so on the face of it they seem quite strong with infantry. Unfortunately they're missing the last infantry armor tech and squires, but I'd still give their infantry a B plus for being so strong out of the gate. Moving on to cavalry now, when you think of what makes a civilization a strong cavalry sieve, most people tend to think of bonuses towards the knight line, and they do have right up to the paladins, so that option is available for them. The scout line is really where it's at though for the Magyars, and once you have the elite Magyar Hazar, it's easy to argue they have the best trash unit in the game from a statistical point of view. Between a really strong cavalry rush in the early game, the best cavalry in a late game trash war, and a sieve bonus that lets them consistently out-tech their opponent's knights in between, and I don't know how to justify anything less than an A plus for their cavalry. Moving on now to Siege, their Siege tree looks like a standard B one, being that they have the essentials but not the top upgrades. 
Notice though that they don't have siege engineers, so the siege is considerably worse in the late game than those of other civilizations. They also don't have bonuses to support a great gold or wood economy in the late game, so siege turns into a weak and costly area of the army. Given the mass pikemen that you're likely to see because of your cavalry heavy army, it'd be nice to have better siege available. As it is, I'd have to give them a C. Taking a look now at the navy, unfortunately there's no civilization bonuses that bolster the navy in even the most remote way, but luckily the tech tree is almost complete. They're pretty much C- bottom tier for taking the water early, and they get outpaced by any civilization with a Dark Age bonus. But I'd say they turn it around into a respectable B in the late game, thanks to the Dock Tech Tree. Overall, that averages out to a C+. Looking at defenses, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of an ugly tech tree. They have no fortified walls, siege engineers, keeps, bombard towers, or architecture. I like to throw hand cannoneers, bombard cannons, and camels in with defenses a bit, all of which they don't have. Overall, you're going to have a hard time playing on the defensive for any length of time as the Magyars, though don't underestimate the situational defensive advantages of the Hazar's anti-siege bonus. The Magyars overall seem to be designed to be played as an aggressive civilization, and I'd give their defenses a C. Looking at their economy now, I'd consider the Wolf Insta-Kill a sort of eco bonus here. The cheaper light cavalry line can also be considered an eco bonus since you're able to create more units over the long run, and their free blacksmith techs are also an eco boost in the same light. Their eco techs are mostly available, except for the last stone upgrade, but who cares about that one. It's a really unusual economy because it surprises you in so many little ways as you go about your business. But I really like free techs and cheaper units, so I'd give it an A-. In summary, I really enjoy playing as the Magyars. I find they have a great early scout cavalry rush, but with better late game trash units than the other early rushing civs. They're great for land maps, whether it's an open map like Arabia or a closed map like Black Forest, though I wouldn't recommend them on a map where there's a lot of water involved. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.